In the latest episode of Internet Drama for Nerds, Elon calls out Sam Ullman yet again for trying to turn OpenAI into a for-profit, but this time with a big brain move of doubling the evaluation for the non-profit OpenAI, which made it harder for Sam Ullman to convert it into a for-profit structure due to the increased complication that it caused, which Sam Ullman responded in an interview, I wish he would just compete by building a better product, but I think there's been a lot of tactics. Probably his whole life is from a position of insecurity. I feel for the guy. You feel for him? I do, actually. I don't think he's like a happy person, I do feel for him. But what if all this was just Elon's rage bait to hype up Grok 3, the latest model from his AI lab, XAI, which was announced a day ago at 8pm and is supposedly now the best AI model in the world. Thank you Elon for giving me insomnia before bedtime and everyone a state of the art model that is not from OpenAI. And before we take a closer look at the most based model in the world, let me share with you this completely free resource made by HubSpot called Unlock Your Marketing Superpowers that can supercharge your marketing strategy by affecting utilizing AI. It comes packed with 1000 plus AI marketing and productivity prompts crafted by marketing experts over at HubSpot and are designed to help marketers, entrepreneurs, and operators to generate fresh ideas, refine business strategies, and save tons of time, all while staying laser focused on your unique goals. With this one resource, you can simplify even your most complex projects and tasks by setting up a game plan for you, tackle every marketing challenge from SEO to social media, brand building to lead generation, and lets you customize prompts easily for content creation, strategy planning, and productivity, tailoring them to your specific business needs. This personal playbook helps you polish your brand strategy, brainstorm new campaigns, and streamline your workflows, giving you a huge head start. And the best part is, you can access it completely for free, giving you more time to lock in on what really matters instead. So if you're ready to elevate your marketing game and take advantage of this resource, be sure to check it out using the link down in the description, and thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Anyways, according to Sam Altman, the very insecure guy gave us a 40 minute live stream demo of Grok 3 along with the XAI team. First, they have unveiled that the model codenamed Chocolate, which has been running on Chatbot Arena for two weeks, is actually an early preview of Grok 3. For those who might have forgotten, Chatbot Arena is where users can compare responses from two different models and choose the response that they prefer, which can then be used to rank the model. Grok 3 is also the first ever model to reach 1400 ELO, reaching top one across all categories. While Chatbot Arena's score is not as highly regarded nowadays, it is still the only third-party benchmark that is available for Grok 3, as other benchmarks that they have shared are official and relies on the AI Labs integrity to make a fair comparison. So this new state-of-the-art model series has topped the chart for both non-reasoning and reasoning models. For the non-reasoning models, it has a full version called Grok 3, which outperforms all other models in terms of raw capabilities with a huge margin, and a smaller model called Grok 3 Mini that is basically on the DeepSeek V3 level. They did not provide any other information on these two models other than the benchmark, but I am guessing the mini version is just distilled from Grok 3. As for the reasoning models, one is called the Grok 3 Reasoning Beta and the other is Grok 3 Mini Reasoning. But this time, you can see that the Grok 3 Mini Reasoning, which sounds like a much weaker model, outperforms Grok 3 Reasoning Beta on two benchmarks. And again, there's not much information about the models, which make this performance discrepancy even more confusing. My speculation is that they use the name Beta because they haven't fully grasped how to apply reasoning reinforcement learning to drive a good thinking process for a super large model like the full Grok 3. So right now, it can only give a subpar result compared to the Grok 3 mini reasoning. While Grok 3 reasoning models did win across the board against the best thinking models like O3 mini high and O1, if you look closely though, you should see a different shade of blue here. They were pretty vague about what this is in the live stream, but from the way they introduced it, it seems like they are making the model to answer a question multiple times and choose the best answer. So the lighter blue part seems to be the boost in performance when the best of an approach is applied. There's nothing inherently wrong with this because that still technically counts as test time compute. It's just that I can see they have only done this to OpenAI's O1, which makes the benchmark a bit unfair. So it looks like Grok 3 is a lot better, but in fact, they only have a slight improvement on top of O3 Mini High. With that being said, they have successfully made a model that's capable of topping O3 Mini High, which was the state of the art, is an insane achievement. But this conclusion is only based on their official benchmark and a third-party benchmark, that is not the most challenging, so we would have to wait and see if that's really the case. And some of you might be thinking, isn't OpenAI's O3 the best model in the world right now? Why is that not included? Well, this guy made a comparison if O3 is included on this benchmark, but the funny thing is, Sam Ullman has claimed that they are discontinuing the complete O3 model, with people suspecting that it might be too expensive to run. So comparing it to a model that is never going to be available for the public definitely seems a bit unfair 
there, especially with how unusable it is price-wise. But what if Glock 3 was just cheating and trained on the benchmarks? Well, they also tested on the newest 2025 Amy benchmark, and with the suspected best of an approach, they were able to top the chart. And even without it, it seems like it is around 01 level, which shows that Glock 3 reasoning is still a really solid model on the paper, of course, because we still need to wait for them to roll out their API and their pricing so we can comprehend how Grok3 actually performs on other more challenging third-party benchmarks. The current reception on its coding capabilities is definitely still not the best compared to O3 Mini High and Claude 3.5 Sonnet so far. However, the good news is they are not charging people 200 bucks a month to get access right now. With its price sitting at 20 bucks a month, wait a minute, they just silently increased the price to 40 bucks, uh, you can get X Premium Plus, the deep search function, which is copying the current deep research trend, two reasoning modes, one is think mode, which would give you a preview of its chain of thought, and the other being the big brain mode, which uses much more test time compute, but doesn't give you a preview of its chain of thought, and access to grok.com, which is their new website dedicated for chatbot use. They also mentioned a super grok subscription just for the website and their standalone phone app with a voice assistant that's coming next week. Hey grok, what's up? Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm so excited to finally meet you. I can't wait to chat and learn more about each other. I'll talk to you soon. But the subscription price is nowhere to be found when I tried to find it. So I guess that is still not available. They did not mention a rate limit for Grok3 either, so good luck testing it out. But I think the most impressive thing is that when GPT-4 was published, the first version of Grok was not even out. Yet now, XAI has previewed Grok3, topping OpenAI's flagship model in such a short amount of time. Other than the amount of money Elon is investing into it, I think the crazier part is how the XAI team executed this at an insane pace. When most companies are struggling to set up a 100k training cluster within two years, they were able to set up a completely brand new data center with 100k GPUs within 112 days, and also adding in another 100k GPUs in 92 days. So with Grok3 being trained with at least 100k GPUs, this gave them a crazy leverage to compete with the best AI labs, not to mention the number of hardware problems you would already encounter when training with 16k GPUs. Training on 100k GPUs takes this difficulty to a whole new level. On the other hand, they also need a way to avoid overloading their electricity generators when all 100k GPUs are running simultaneously. And their solution is pretty cool. So similar to how water towers solved the problem of on-demand water usage, they use Tesla Mega Packs to store extra electricity when the GPUs are offline and supply the 100k GPUs when they are running. And with them planning on adding another 100k of GB200 and GB300 into their cluster, the competition is about to get really fierce in the AI field. As for the open sourcing plans of Grok2, they plan to publish it when the current version, which is Grok3, is fully complete. So with Grok3 being the first big model release after DeepSeek R1 has published the best method to create a thinking model, the chain reaction has now been set, which means we might not be very far off from seeing GPT 4.5 and Claude 4, especially with how Grok3 now has the state-of-the-art title. So I think it will be another crazy two weeks in AI, so subscribe to stay tuned. But that also means I might not have enough chances to cover the latest paper, like this new DeepSeek paper that increases the generation speed of LLMs up to 11 times. So I highly recommend you to check out my newsletter where I'll be covering it in the next issue. On my newsletter, I usually cover the latest and the juiciest research papers that I might not have time to cover in videos. So if you enjoy learning about the cutting edge research papers, definitely give it a look. Thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferreria, Zion Sheep, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.